All right, good afternoon. Uh, we are back. Um, I spent some time uh, learning how to do the um, uh, the basics in the Embrilliant software this morning. And uh, I'm going to um, now spend some time. Uh, I've got our file on a floppy disk and uh, we're going to get it loaded into the machine, um, but I need just a second to do some setup here. Um, we, uh, Andy left uh, some cameras here for podcasting. Turns out it's uh, perfect for me to grab and use for these uh, Facebook live streams. So I wanted to start with the machine off. So if you watch the prior video, all I've done literally at this point is take, uh, take the existing file we built and uh, a USB floppy drive. Look at this, USB floppy drive. Uh, and copied our file. I did, I did uh, drop the file name length, so I have it on this handy floppy disk. And uh, we're gonna uh, just go through all the steps, and you're gonna watch me screw up in real time. This is gonna be exciting. All right, so first step, we're gonna actually turn the power button on on the machine. And uh, I'm going to do my best to not be super shaky cam, but you can see there's nothing on the display. Well, that's because this machine also has this big secondary power on button. So we hit that. Now you're going to hear some beeps, and it's going to start to fire up. And uh, uh, I didn't really play a lot with camera angle here. Uh, let me take the camera up just a bit for right now so you can get you a little closer to where you can see that display. This display is, uh, this machine's 20 years old, and this display is 20 years old, and so it takes a little bit of time to warm up. Uh, there we go. Okay. And so I'm going to say, uh, no, I don't want to continue where I left off, and uh, we are going to uh, pop the floppy in. For those of you uh, who weren't born... Uh, Back in the 70s, like me, you take the floppy, it goes in a little slot on the side like that. You know, this the metal side out like that. Yeah, I'm being somewhat sarcastic, I'm assuming. You know how to load a floppy. Okay, then, uh, it's been a while since I used this, but menu. Uh, this is the, um, the load. Uh, I feel like you probably still can't see that very well. Um, I probably want to take this tripod. Uh, up a notch, but to do that, I have to give you like max shaky cam. So we're just going to leave it like that for right now. So I'm going to hit that button. And then what that lets us do is that lets us see any open slots that we have. So turns out none of our slots are uh, open, but I recognize these UT files. Uh, those were from the, uh, the patch that I made for candy. Hang on a second. I'll show it to you. Those were from that patch right there. Uh, one file is the border, one is the skull. I've got another file in there. Uh, I know that's what those are because UT is Urban, urban Threads. Uh, they do some really great art. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually uh, delete uh, those UT files. What we're doing is we're, we're actually looking at the memory on the machine, not the memory on the floppy. Um, because we have to have, uh, the machine has 10 slots of memory, and so we have to clean out some slots in the memory to be able to load. I'm going to go ahead and delete out all the UT files that I was working with. Okay, so now we've got uh, some others. So now you can see we're on slot 5, if you can read that, slot 5. And... Um, uh, hey, Ron. Hey, Andrew. Hey, Ricardo. Uh, we're going to make some penguins with thread in a minute. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're now going to hit our floppy, which it's going to take a second to load from the floppy. Let's give it a second. What we'll see is a list of files on the floppy. And this is a Mary Poppins theme event. So if I scroll down, uh, what I should see, I'm guessing it'll be at the end because I just loaded it. I just put it on the file. No. Uh, where is it here? I'm looking for something that started with MP. There it is, MP. MP towel. So that's the penguin holding a towel, uh, like butler penguin uh, from this morning. So we're going to hit enter. 
And what that's going to do is it's going to load it in. And it's an embroidery machine. It counts everything in stitches. Forget about kilobytes. It's all about stitches. So while it's loading that file in, we'll just be patient. And then I'm going to need to hoop up a sheet of uh, stabilizer. So I'm going to make a little table space over here for doing that. All right, so we are loaded. You can see we're in the MP towel. Um, it is in the up, upright orientation, which means that when we when we print it uh, or when we stitch it, uh, the top of the file will be at the top. Um, uh, one thing I learned is like if you're doing caps or something else, we need to rotate it. What will happen is that F will actually turn to show you the degree of rotation. If we were in cap mode, you'd see a little cap on there. Uh, so what this what we can see is there are uh, I don't know if you can read that really. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go rogue here. I'm gonna take the camera off the tripod and hold it closer so you can see it. Mm, my cord's wrapped up a little bit. Is that focusing? There we go. So what we can see is see where it says um, uh, TCF. That's total color function. So that means there's two color functions. So there's two color changes. And I'll show you in a minute. I printed it out. So basically, we have a few stitches in one color. And then we have a bunch of stitches uh, in another color. Um, so basically, that's one function here, one color change, and then another color change at the end, um, which seems kind of weird. You'd think you'd have a color change at the beginning, uh, but it doesn't work that way. Uh, that's why I have this label here that says set first color. OK, so I'm going to get rid of shaky cam here. Bear with me. All right, we're back in the uh, tripod. So uh, I'm going to uh, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to Go ahead and take the camera back off for a second, and I'm going to set it on something. And uh, just give me a second. I'm going to go ahead and take the tripod legs up more now that I know that I want it higher for showing this. I had it set up more uh, lower so that it would be closer to the embroidery uh, head itself, to the needles. But for showing you the screen, uh, you really need to have it uh, a little better here. So. Give me just a second. Now I know. Okay, so now let's see if we can get closer. I need to move some stuff. It's under the table here. Tripod legs over. And I don't know that that's actually any better to show you the screen, but that's what we've got for now. Okay, so our files loaded here. Uh, it's in slot five. We're ready to go. It's uh, 9,870 stitches. Uh, now what we need to do is take uh, some stabilizer. Now I happen to have stabilizer on a roll, and because we're not going to test on our actual fabric, right? So let's move our tripod so we move our camera here. Welcome to my messy table. And the way we hoop this up is that we're going to have the stabilizer go between this outer ring and the hoop. And this whole thing gets loaded into the machine. So we're going to just rip a sheet of this off. Uh, if you have an embroidered shirt or whatever, uh, and you look inside that, uh, you're going to see. So if you had a piece of embroidered something and you looked inside, you're going to see you know, that cut out. You'll see this stabilizer. That holds the stitches in place. So what we're going to do is uh, cheat. This is my, my cheater method. And we just basically, as long as the hoop is fairly tight, we just press it on like that, and that's good. Okay, we're going to reposition the camera again so that you can see better. Okay, welcome to my messy embroidery station. And now this installs these arms here on the pantograph drive. This installs by popping up here, popping in here, and then that's actually a positive lock right there. Now. Um, what I didn't do is I didn't check my bobbin thread. So I'm going to actually pop this back out because it'll be easier for you to see the bobbin thread process if I. So this little guy flops down here and then we reach in and we've got a little bobbin case. We want to look and make sure there's actually some thread on there. And I'm going to get this closer so you can see the thread comes out the side. Focus. There we go. Thread comes out the side and goes through this little windy windy spring action little thing here focus 
you can do it. There we go. And so that's what it looks like. And it goes in with this open spot at the top. It looks confusing once you've done it once. It takes a second to just get used to it. Pops in, and then you just leave that thread hanging out like that. And that's our, that's the the back thread. That's our um, uh, bobbin thread. It's the back side of the stitch. So let me show you. So when you stitch something like this, you see, like in this case, you see the green thread. But then the back side, you can actually see the white thread is the back side of that same stitch. There's loops that are in the white that are holding it in. And that comes from the bobbin there. And then this machine is a, it's a Barodan uh, 15 needle machine. So we can actually have 15 colors loaded. Uh, in this file, the first color, actually, let me get the color sheet up and I'll show you. What's nice is the embroidery software prints these sheets. So this is the one we did in the last video. And what we did is we set this pinkish color here to be the first color but it also prints out what your color operations are. So it tells you, hey, you're starting with pale pink, 340 stitches. And when we look at the machine over on the side, it, it should similarly tell us how many stitches uh, we have. Um, now, what's really interesting here, huh? Oh, there it is, 9,762 stitches. The machine sees 9,870 stitches. So. It, it like interprets some things like jump stitches and other things. I don't know why it says uh, 4,000 here and 340 there. That clearly doesn't add up to uh, 9,762 there. So hmm, I guess we'll figure it out. Anyway, uh, and let's do some math. Uh, I think I set this up for a 150 millimeter hoop, uh, but we're gonna, t I'll show you how to test in the hoop in just a second. So, all right, so we checked our, we checked our bobbin. We're going to put our um, hoop back in place here in our pantograph drive. And I don't know if you can make that out. I'm going to, you know, I, I raised the tripod legs, and I think I went a little too far on that. So let's take it back down some. Forgive the shaky cam here while we get the tripod. Whee! All right, maybe that's best of both worlds here. Bear with me. You might need to set up multiple cameras for this operation, you know? Go go all pro. All right, that's much better. So now, maybe hard to see on screen, but we can actually see the little hole here where the bobbin, where it stitches. Yeah, you can see it. And I have it kind of in the middle here. And we can actually use the buttons on the machine. So we can use the uh, up, down, left, right buttons here to move that around. Oops. And then if I'm not looking, I accidentally load the floppy again by not paying attention. Okay, so when we, I'm going to set it right in the center, and most of the embroidery software will set you at the center. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my drive on. This button's blinking here. Okay, so now what I'm, what I'm basically, I'm ready to stitch. My drive is lit because that's solid. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit menu, and uh, one of these commands right there that one is a perimeter trace you see that and when we select that watch what happens sorry for the shaky cam it will actually show you the extents of where it's going to go now the problem was it's actually larger than this hoop um, so that's an issue. Uh, that's a that's a my bad. So uh, I wasn't at the space when I was doing these. Let me find a tape measure real quick. I thought these were 150 millimeter hoops. And maybe it is. And yeah, it's uh, it's pretty. Actually, it's more like one. 40, so that could have been my problem. It's more like 140 millimeters clear on the inside. Uh, okay, so I have some scaling work to do in software later. Um, I think for right now what I'm going to do is scale it on the machine, which isn't optimal. Generally, you want to scale it in your software. 
Um, but I'm going to go ahead and I'll show you that you can scale on the machine itself. Sorry for the glare. So we're going to go back out of drive mode and we're going to go to the file where we can see it and then there's functions. See V scale and H scale. I don't know if you can read those. So we're going to take it to 90% V scale, 90% H scale. And my understanding is a little scaling is okay, but if you're doing too much scaling, you're really going to screw up the, the stitch pattern. You're better off going back into your original software and scaling it and letting it redo the stitches uh, there. Okay, so then we're going to hit menu to go back out of that. And we're going to hit drive again. And then I'm going to run that same, see my perimeter test. We're going to run that perimeter test again. And basically I'm just going to watch because this is the active needle and there's the hole. So what we're going to do is see, see it still looks big. But it's not going all the way to the top. But it's still a little top. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to scale it for... Uh, so let's come back out of drive mode. Let's go back to our files. Let's go back to our function. And let's, whoop. Let's take it to 80%. Let's run our perimeter again. Definitely in this time, definitely in this time, definitely in. In fact, see how it's not going to the top? I could actually buy myself a little bit of space here. So what I did is I just reset the origin, and I'm going to run it again. Definitely in, definitely in, definitely in, definitely in. Okay. So basically, that's a good way to make sure that you don't put a needle into your plastic hoop because that will break a needle. And this hoop, uh, it has some holes on it from, from me doing that. Okay, so the first color that this is supposed to be is like a pinkish color, salmon color. I don't have anything like that loaded, but this is just a test. I don't care. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it with like a, a gold color, which is on number eight. So I'm going to hit... Uh, I'm going to go hit menu, the number change, I'm on 12. Oh, okay, so when you see this error, what that means is that the, the needle bar is not in a position to move. So there is this little lever right here. We push that forward, then we hit play. You'll see it doesn't say the word top right here. When I hit play, what it does is it just like adjusts the needle a little bit. See how it says top now? Now I put that lever... I put that lever back where it was. I always forget that step. That's tough. And now I can actually use that needle thing, and I can move over to needle eight. And the way you can tell which needle you're on is both, it says needle eight right here, N08. And then if I reposition the camera, you'll see the dot, the red dot, is on needle eight. So that's going to be a gold, uh, a gold color. Okay? So now all we're going to do is we're going to reach over here, and we're going to hit play. And um, I'm going to just make sure, actually this can go down a little bit here. What I'm going to do is make sure that gold is actually threaded. It is. I can see it. Uh, I'm just checking my thread path because uh, to make sure everything looks good. It does. Uh, okay, so I'm going to hit play. And um, that's an unfortunate bit of fun is it immediately uh, had a thread issue. So I don't know if it came unthreaded, if there just wasn't enough there or what. So this is the joy of, um, of embroidery machines, is making sure you, you stay threaded properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the tripod over here so that I can get in and work on it. And then I'm going to pull a little thread out. Uh, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll use a pair of uh, good scissors and I'll just snip the end nice and clean and then uh, a little moisture on the end of it there. 
and then it came out of uh, when I pulled on it, it came out of this hole here so I'm going to put it back in thread it through there okay now it it needs to go through our needle and there is a ring a ring around the top of it uh, I'll show you that in a second so I'm gonna oh man first try through the needle I'll tell you uh, doing that earlier in the day is a lot easier than doing that late in the day, that's for sure. All right, so I'm just going to pull the excess thread around here, for the, around the back for the second, and then uh, I'm going to push it back up into that retaining ring, which is actually the order that they suggest. Thread it, and then get it in the ring. And then you can see I'm reaching around the back side. I'm actually going to hold it and leave a little tension. My hand is clear from the, the sewing area. Now, the machine stopped because it detected a thread break, which is really awesome. So what I'm going to do is there's a special button right on the head, which you can't see there. Hang on. It's right here. It's this button right here. Actually, I'll move back around here now. That button is the auto mend. So what I'm going to do is more or less back it up. That's like a rewind button, and it'll basically reverse its path. Because one of the things I've learned is you're much better off with some extra stitches over each other than a gap in stitches, if that makes sense. So I'm going to reach up and hit play again, and it's going to get started. And then what it's going to do is it's going to stop at the point it broke. And the reason for that is it says, like, hey, did you did you get it right? Do you, do you need to go back and do it again? It's a super awesome feature, and I think one of the things that that makes this such a nice machine. Uh, I don't know if all of them do it or not. I'm going to trim that extra thread that we had there. And I'm going to hit the play button again to say keep going. And I'm going to get you a little closer. So we're doing the foot. We're doing the foot of the penguin right now. I'm going to hit pause because I just wanted to on the machine because I just wanted to show you something. Do you see how it it did this here, and then it moved up there? So what's beautiful is that it trimmed the it trimmed the um, thread for us. So we can see that move right here on this dashed line, right? That's called a jump. And the machine knew, hey, that jump is more than a certain distance. I don't want you to have to go back and cut that off. So I'm going to cut it down here. That's one of the beautiful things about these machines that auto cut. I'm going to cut it off here, and then I'll start again up here. So very cool thing. And let's go ahead and hit play again. So I just hit stop. Um, now it's going to do the uh, the bottom of the uh, beak or bill. I'm still not sure what the right name for that is. Um, and that stop was actually me being paranoid because I thought I needed a color change, but I forgot it still had more to do. Yeah. And there it is. So now it should change. 
and then it should ask me, okay, so this was a color stop because I didn't pre-program what color to uh, put it on. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look up and number three is black. So we're gonna go back and say uh, menu, needle, go that way, a whole bunch. Okay, uh, I just wanna check something back here. All right, we're good. And so now we're on needle three. Uh, we're gonna get this white out of the way. Oh, hey, look, needle three is actually tied up. You see this and it goes, whoops, there it is. And it goes up here. Um, it is threaded. Um, yep, it is threaded properly. It just had some excess and so I had it on the holder. So I'm gonna hit go. I'm gonna hit stop real quick just because I wanna trim off that little bit of excess that it didn't get here, just in case, make it cleaner for later. All right, so, um, heh, yeah, welcome to embroidery. All right, let me actually drop the camera a little bit lower so you can see this. Can you see that uh, nest of crap here? So, uh, yeah, something didn't work out quite right. So what we're going to do is, oh, look, and we had a thread break. So I'm going to pull it back and get it out of the way. And then... Um, so the nice part, as I mentioned, is too much thread is generally okay. So, oh, I should have said, if anybody knows more than me on this, then you just correct me and tell me what I'm doing wrong. But for the moment, I'm just gonna trim that extra thread and I'm gonna back up a few steps because I don't know how far back it lost its way because that was a lot of thread. It was up in there somewhere. And uh, I'm gonna hit play and see if it'll recover nicely. And, oh, I see the problem. The thread's not in the needle. Okay, I gotta move the camera. Let me get in here. Give you the reverse shot this time. Uh, either way, my hand's gonna be blocking it. Yeah, thread wasn't actually in the needle. So, again, I'm gonna snip it clean with a pair of scissors. Give it a little moisture. And, yeah, hey, look at that. I might have a clue altogether. Uh, for those of you who want to suggest uh, needle threaders, uh, I have been, I tried a couple, um, but none of them fit through these embroidery needles. So I don't know if I bought the wrong thing or if I'm doing it wrong or what. So I just do it by hand. Okay, we're back together. I'm going to use the auto mend to rewind a little bit. You got a great shot of my arm here. Okay, and let's try that again. So that would have been where it broke before. So we're going to hit play and say keep going. Okay, so now we've got a bobbin break error. Are we having fun yet? So I'm gonna uh, back it up. I'm gonna pop the bobbin out here. See what I see? Okay, it's not it's not broken. We might have a little bird's nesting action underneath our piece here, um, but I don't I don't really see it. Uh, our you know this is where it gets fun is like if the tension of a specific thread is off, um, you know, you can have all sorts of problems. I'm going to keep trying.
Yeah, we're definitely we definitely got something going on here. Uh, this is the fun is getting it all dialed in. We'll pull the bobbin back out. Uh, make sure the bobbin's not messed up or too low. Uh, no, it, it looks like it's supposed to. Again, I'm not an expert here. I push the button again until it works. If this keeps up, then I'll... Wait, wait. I see a problem. <laughs> Our black... Uh, whoa. Our black broke. See that? Whoops, let me get it where you can see it. Uh, see that? A lot of thread, not much thread. I'm going to pull a little bit. It doesn't feel like a tension problem. It feels pretty good. Uh, now, I also did, when I, when, I, um, when I set up the stitches on this design, I did them with a very small stitch size compared to what it normally would do. So I'm hoping that that's not a problem. I may have to... Uh, I may have to think about that. Sorry, I just smacked the camera. You got a great view of the back of my hand here, I'm sure. Okay, let's, and you know what, while I'm in here, I can snip that extra little piece of black. Boy, it did that gold so nicely, too. All right, keep going. So this is clearly not working. <laughs> uh, you see this? See this mess? This is the fun of embroidery. So sometimes these things work out really well and they go super fast and it just works. And everybody's like, oh, it's so easy. Um, I'm getting a lot of thread on the bottom, a lot. Yeah, I'm wondering if it's this, um, the density on this pattern. I may need to go in and change that because, and this is where I just don't have enough experience to really troubleshoot and tell you, you know, is it, thread tension or is it bobbin tension or is it you know what the hell is it so all I can really do is see if I can get it to keep I hit stop on that one. I can just tell you this is so dense. I think I've, uh, I think I, I, I think that's a mistake that I made in the software. See, it did it again. Yeah. Okay, I'm calling this one because this is uh, this is a mess. So let's trim it again. Let's get the excess out of here. We'll get our black. Uh, get my finger back. I'm going to put it back up on the holder. Trim that piece. And let's go ahead and pull this off. And uh, I'll show you what the back looks like. And oh, didn't trim my bobbin thread. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So. Just looking at it, let's see if I can get it to focus on it really close. It's um, it's super dense, like way too dense, and so it's it's like pulling the stabilizer up and um, uh, 
yeah and you can see all this nodding and all that that's that's bad now the gold looks pretty nice uh, but I bet I didn't do the density as high on the gold so um, so okay so that's one down right <laughs> and uh, hey did you think everything worked the first time no so we'll unhoop that and uh, there, oh, there we go there's there's number one right we'll leave number one there so what I'm gonna do is uh, uh, here you can actually look at me for change. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I will go back into the software and uh, change some of those parameters. I spent like an hour doing that uh, online this morning. So I think I'm just going to do that real quick and then uh, start a stream again, and we'll go from there. I, I don't really want to uh, babble at you the whole time that uh, I'm doing that. So anyway, thanks for uh, thanks for watching. And we'll be back for more.